In this video, I'm taking inspiration from three 20th century street photographers. Now, the great thing about street photography is not as dependent on gear, say, as bird photography is or sports photography. The nice thing about street photography and how it kind of developed is because cameras got smaller. You got the little Leicas and now we've got our little Micro Four Thirds which are perfect for street photography. They're inobtrusive, less noticeable than big gear, a lot lighter, a lot less expensive, unless of course you are shooting Leica cameras. And it allows us to capture everyday life. And it's kind of neat to look back on those photos. Perhaps you've shot photos 20, 30, 50 years ago that you can look back on and say, wow, you know, that was kind of cool. It's nostalgic. It captures culture and people and places and buildings and architecture. It's about the time. Street photography is about an era. At least that's how I feel. Street photography is less about obsessing over gear and settings and more about what you see out there. You need to be more intentional with your photos. Experience the whole scene and not just that fraction of a second where you grab your shots. With street photography, you can take time to appreciate the aesthetic as opposed to settings and techniques. Anticipate what's going to happen next. Keep it simple. Take a small camera and one lens. Even your mobile phone will do. The less resistance, the better. You're developing your skills as an observer of life, light and composition and capturing that in the decisive moment. I recently saw a Diane Arbus exhibit. Now I learned about Arbus in photo school. She produced powerful portraits in the 1960s and 70s. She photographed a wide range of subjects, both ordinary and unusual, often in their own homes or out on the street. She shot in black and white and printed her own work. What I learned from seeing the Arbus exhibit is that all her photos look intentional. She engaged her subjects. Even with her informal street portraits, people are always looking at her. In doing so, there is a relationship with her subjects. Driving home from the exhibit, I found myself seeing street scenes through Diane Arbus eyes. I passed a mom with a stroller and another man waiting for the bus and saw a Diane Arbus photo with the camera in my head. In contrast, Henri Cartier-Bresson engaged his subjects less. In his street photography, he was more like a thief, and those are his words. He was a great observer of the whole scene, and he framed his images intentionally. He anticipated the decisive moment inside that frame. Composition and negative space are strong in his work. Another favorite street photographer of mine is Vivian Meyer. A huge archive of her photos and undeveloped film was found in a storage locker after she died. She photographed in New York and Chicago from the 1950s to the 1990s. She worked independently and has posthumously become one of the most important American street photographers of the 20th century. She's probably not in any history of photography textbooks yet, but she soon will be. Watch the documentary on Vivian Meyer. It will motivate you to get out and start developing your street photography skills. It's good to study a body of work to see how someone's style emerges. When viewing an exhibit, it's easy to get overwhelmed by a series that took many years to create. So if you're starting out today with a new type of photography or a new subject matter, Remember that it will take time to develop your eye for it. For example, I started bird photography less than three years ago and I'm constantly changing my techniques as I hone my skills and learn the art of bird photography. Getting comfortable with street photography may take some time. If you're too shy to photograph people right away, try to capture the essence of the place. Cartier-Bresson said, of course you first have to have talent. If you don't have talent, don't bother. But you have to cultivate talent. You have to read. You have to look at sculpture and paintings. That's how you build this talent. You have to be involved. 
You have to be engaged with what you see. Otherwise, the photos will not be good. Otherwise, you'll just do your job as an indifferent spectator. So talent and involvement are both things that hold a lot of weight. So become involved and get steeped in the topic. Head to your central library and look up some books on the history of photography and then look up the street sections of those books. I guarantee you, you will be inspired. Most major cities have photography shows and festivals. They are totally worth checking out. If you're ever in New York City, visit the MoMA Photography Collection. I did it in 1988 and seeing the actual prints I had only seen reproduced in textbooks was so rewarding. So get off your Instagram feed and go look at some actual printed photographs. And if you're still stuck or procrastinating, a good book to get you through your creative blocks is The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. It's a quick read and worth rereading once a year or so. I get something new out of it every time I pick it up. Now some of it is a bit woo-woo, with talk of muses and angels. And some days I'm not into the woo-woo. But today, my takeaway from The War of Art is, without a muse, you're just using technique without art. Studying the work of other photographers can unlock your muse. You get inspired. You get motivated. What's your takeaway? Do you engage your muse in your photography? If this video resonates with you, check out this one next.